Yo, so what's up, what's up, what's up? Okay, I promised my team that I would go over sniper entries. So in this video, I'm going to actually talk about sniper entries. And I'm going to talk about how I made 2500 between two accounts in one week. Okay. I have a Traders Way Live account. As you guys can see here, this is my live account. Made $1,000. Then let me go on over to my KOT. Look at that, fifteen hundred dollars. So my Traders Way Live, I made a thousand. My funding talent account, and I've only had this account since last Thursday. I made twenty five hundred dollars between two accounts. God is good. Well, first, before I get started, y'all be sure to like this video, okay, subscribe to my YouTube channel, as I'm going to be giving y'all more valuable videos just like this one, all right? So, let's go ahead and talk about sniper entries and how I killed it on all these trades, okay? For y'all that don't know what fun and talent is, fun and talent is exactly what it sounds like. If you think you're really talented in the Forex market, this company will fund your account for you they first start you off with the demo account like i'm doing now right and i believe you got to make anywhere between 15 to eighteen thousand dollars in your demo right now i've only had this account not even a week yet it'd be a week tomorrow i'm already at 1500 bucks my goal is to make eighteen thousand by july 1st it today is july 2nd okay so i'm gonna be following up letting y'all know when I make it and how the process goes but enough about all that let's talk about sniper entries sniper entries is key so looking at usd cat a lot of y'all see a lot of my lines those are my zones this price actions that's been touched and being respected first off the first thing you need to do is to add all three moving averages that's the first thing come to the f so I got the moving average here. I got the 20 exponential, okay? I have the 50 exponential, the 200 exponential, and the nine exponential. So I'll tell y'all a story real quick. My guy, uh, Chad, shout out to you, bro. He's the one that actually introduced these MAs to me, okay? He's the one that introduced this AMA, the non-AMA to me. And the non-AMA has truly, truly, truly changed the way I trade and changed my life. Okay? It's made me so much more profitable. It's made me so much better. And then for y'all that don't know, I've been trading almost two years in October. Since October of 2019, I've been trading for two years. And I added the nine. You know, one thing I told Chad was like, man, I always felt like the market's always touching something, but it's like it's touching air. What I was missing was the non-AMA. So, this is the non-AMA right here. This is my 20 AMA. I really always train and talked about the 20 AMA, but the non-AMA is the real, real, real deal holy field where whenever that one's being respected, you have to watch it. Okay, so if you look at this purple line, you see how it's respecting the non AMA. Look at it. Anytime we try to break, dropped, break, drop, break. And that's how I got these zones. See how those touches? So I got those zones, and then it dropped every time. Look at it, break it, then it drop. And UCAT overall is in a downward trend. Okay, UCAT is overall in a downward trend. Sniper entry. See, came up to this to this nine here on the daily. This is on the daily now. Okay, it's really good to analyze the market on the higher time frames. See, a lot of traders they go they go here and try to analyze the market, or they try to go here and analyze the market. Which this is honestly a good way to analyze it because if you look at the two hundred, it's on top. The nine is crossing down to twenty. It's crossing, and then this is actually crossing the fifty. So these are more than likely going to continue to head down. So this is a good way to analyze the market, even using H4, okay? 
But I actually went a step further and go to the daily, go to the weekly, and come to the monthly. Okay, the monthly give you a big picture on overall what what the market is doing and where it's headed. So as you guys can tell on the monthly, UCAT has been going down since this long week is when it started. This was back in March 1st of 2020. Okay, right around when COVID happened, pretty much. Okay, why UCAT has been going down, I have no idea. But all I know is I've been making money off of it. I've been using these EMAs. So a lot of my videos, I talk about how these EMAs, anytime they're crossing, let's let you know where the market is headed. The overall picture, you see it's crossing down on the monthly. So that means what? It's going to continue down. I haven't even crossed the 200 yet on the monthly. And this is the biggest time frame that you can trade. Okay. Coming to the weekly. Look, it's already crossed the weekly. Zoom out. Let me zoom out right quick. It's already crossed the, the H4. So it's already crossed these higher time frames. It's crossed the daily already too. So what you think it's going to do on a monthly? It's going to cross. Okay. Now. I really use the daily for my sniper entries. Okay. Sometimes H4. Sometimes H1. But mainly the daily. Because whenever you see this happen. You see how I wicked out. And then dropped. Guess what it's going to do? It's going to jump to the support zone. Okay. Now let's go down. Looking at H4. Okay. So this is my zone up here. Obviously it didn't touch the zone. But this would be a zone. So let me actually draw this zone live while I'm on this. So I'll remember next week whenever I trade it. So you see, that's another zone. So touch, touch, dropped. Okay. It broke the 50 here, but then it dropped. But look, every time it breaks the 50, comes back down and it continues to drop. Broke the 50, right? Touch the zone, then it dropped. Sniper injuries. You want to get in whenever you come to the daily, especially whenever you're trading UCAT. Okay, when you see UCAT break the nine, just be waiting for a sell position because we've already identified the trend on the monthly, the weekly, and the daily. So just wait for a sell position and you will make money. Some of y'all that trade the RSI, yes. RSI is low on the weeklies, 23. Yes. RSI is low on the monthly. Yes. But. You cannot ignore these EMAs. They have yet to cross the 200 on the monthly. So this, guess what this is going to do? It's going to continue to drop, y'all. It's going to continue to drop. And look at it. Let's zoom out on the monthly. This is where it's headed. It's headed to the 119. It's almost there. And it might continue to drop. Who knows? Now when the RSI do hit in the 20s on the monthly, yes. Look for it to retrace back up to the 200. But until then, just look for sales on UCAT. Okay? Like I said, I look at the daily. Come to the higher time frames. I said, touch this nine. Then I get ready to sell. I see it hit a zone. So that's a zone. That's a zone. Get ready for it to touch it. It didn't break. It didn't touch the 20. So guess what? It's going to go down. Okay? That's it. That's how I'm getting these sniper entries. I mean, you can do it on M5 and M15. Now, I can, I can explain for you scalpers right quick. So, if you're scalping, if you're a scalper, the best time to get on sniper entries, especially when you've identified the trend and it's in a downward trend, you come down to M5 or M15, either one, doesn't matter. And if you are one of those that trade price action or looking for the RSI, so on UCAT, sometimes it will, RSI will come up here, but nine times out of 10, it's actually been at this level, at the 63, 65, then it's been dropping, okay? I'll back test it and make sure, okay? And you see it's touching that resistance zone. So, again, every time I touch this resistance up here, overall downward trend, RSI is high, look to sell, okay? Now, if it breaks out of this resistance, then obviously wait to sell. But since it's been respecting this resistance on M15, guess what we're going to do? We're going to wait for that drop. Okay. Once these counters get closed underneath the 200, it's time for UCAD to continue in this downward trend. That simple. That easy. Okay. 
I'm gonna do one more. I'll wrap this up. There's not, it's not a lot to really know about sniper entries, but just know that sniper entries do make you or break you. Okay, let's go to GJ. Let's go to the daily. I also have a lot of time. Uh, a lot of uh, sorry, a lot of time friends. <laughs> I also have a lot of a lot of uh lines here. Because these are my zones that I'm expecting it to go to. Okay. Looking at the daily. Look like it tried to uh, reject off the nine. But I think this is I'm just gonna come down to the 20. So a sniper entry probably be right here when it comes to the 20. Because what normally happens to the left happens to the right. So it look like here. I tried to come touch the 20, broke a little bit, and continued up. GJ overall, though, is in an upward trend. Strong upward trend. What I would really like, okay, is to be safe. What I would really like is to see the daily break the 9 and the 20, touch the 50 like it did here, and like it did over here. At least get really close to it, and then continue up. So that would be a good time to get in for a buy. Anytime RSI is this high on the daily... You do have to respect it, but it's also high on the weekly as well. So I'm honestly thinking that this might come down to this nine here on the weekly and go back up. Because you see what happened here? Broke the weekly a little bit, then it shot back up. Okay. And then right here, though, it's just really respecting the weekly. Okay. And you see it crossed the 200. So we've identified that this is overall up a trend at this current, current moment. Okay. Now, if you look at the monthly, the 200. It's right here. Okay. So that tells me that this overall is trying to do a trend reversal. GJ's been going down. Okay. GJ's been going down since 2016 of January. January 1st. Actually a little bit longer than that. But once he's gotten underneath the 200, this has been dropping. Okay. And then here recently, in the last year or so, so March 1st of 2020, like I said, right around when COVID happened, started going up. And the EMA is just crossing. See that? EMAs are crossing. Counter sticks are way above it. Okay. So these counter sticks do have to come down here. Okay. Notice these are not indicators. These lines, those are my... Uh, uh, resistance line, my horizontal lines, those are not indicators, okay? Only thing I'm using is the four moving averages, obviously the RSI, support and resistance. That's about it. Oh, I'm sorry, M's and W's. Speaking of that, uh, GJ actually looks like a ugly M is in the RSI on the monthly. So that's another confirmation to let you know that this might drop down to this nine. So, and this does move, okay, this does meet, so it's probably going to be more than likely about riding around in this area before it actually goes back up, okay. You probably can scalp it for about a week or so, see what it's going to do, but as you guys can tell, like here you see how it broke above the EMAs, okay. I don't know what happened, see how it broke above the EMAs, it went up, okay. Sniper entries. Uh, see, I typically what I typically do is I come down to the smaller time frames, and I've identified the trend, which is overall upward trend on GJ, especially GJ. Okay, I will come to M5 and see. Okay, so see it worked out down here. Where's RSI at? RSI right here was it's about 36. Okay, let's go to M15. Okay. Same thing, RSI was roughly, I think it was a little bit lower than that, like 30 or so on M15. So I'm using the M15 to know when to enter, okay? So M15, M5, M30, I'm using these time frames to know when to enter on a buy or a sell. Because that, to me, that's what the time frames are there for. Let me see how much time I got. 14 minutes. Man, I've been talking about this forever. But that's that's honestly uh, the best time to enter, okay? Identify the trend on a higher time frame, okay? Like example, GJ's been going up. So when GJ does retrace, let me see. Okay, you see how I retraced here? 
See how GJ retraced here? Trace, drop, 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 drop. RSI was getting low, okay? On a higher time frames even, okay? It was dropping as well. So, it's all the way up here. Came up, drop, 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 drop. Touched the 50, okay? You say, okay, it's touching another moving average. So, I wonder if it's going to go up or down. Now, the RSI on the higher time frames sometimes don't line up with the lower time frames. Which is fine because the higher time frames you're getting the overall big picture. But again, the lower time frames is where you're using your sniper entries. So again, it's been dropping for quite some time. You see RSI is low. Okay. Especially, okay, especially if you ever see RSI low on uh H1, which I believe yesterday. RSI, yeah, so you see that uh, the W and the RSI, that's something you cannot ignore. But you see the W right here, okay? That is, it was at 26, okay? If you was trading UCAT, you see RSI at 26, sure, it might push up a little bit too, but overall down with trend, so I would, I'd be afraid to place a buy on UCAT. But on GJ, since it's an overall upward trend, I would definitely get ready to place a buy, and that's what I did. And that's how I made my money on GJ. Okay? Going back to it, that's how I made my money on GJ. I had buy limits for days, but you see this money I made? 4, 6, 4, 17, 2, 14. Okay? Uh, obviously, didn't hit my buy limits on that. But, yeah, that, that's, how, that's how I made my money on GJ yesterday. Okay? I seen the RSI was low. I bought in. I think it was actually uh, my buy limit is at 154.900. I set my buy limit a little higher because sometimes the market makers see that uh, they see your buy limit and they purposely don't hit it. So that's fine. So you get in, you bend a little bit of a drawdown or whatever, and then obviously eventually it goes up because guess what? GJ overall is a upward trend. And I said, man, you just come to lower time frames. Identify the trend first. Let me take that back. You actually identify the trend first. Once you identify the trend, which is up or down, doesn't matter. RSI is either high or low. Doesn't matter, depending on the trend. Whenever you see, like on UK, you see RSI is like 60, 70s. You're like, okay, snap an entry for UK. And it's something you can hold for a couple of days. Same thing with GJ. If RSI is low. You can buy and something that you can hold for a couple of days, okay? Once you see the RSI get really high and it touches a resistance zone, which would be up here or even up here, then go ahead and take your profits and you'll be good and go about your day. It's that easy, y'all. It's that easy, okay? you have any more questions, I can answer them for you. But I just wanted to make a video, and I'm pretty sure I went way over time, okay? Hopefully you made it to this video. But I wanted to make sure... That I left y'all with enough nuggets to where you can win in your trades. But anyways, other than that, this is Terry D, the one and only motivational speaker. And remember to put God first and everything will work itself out. Peace.